acting. So uh, again, I, I start out just kind of uh, setting the table of what uh, what is it that uh, the customer wants. You yep. know, I always say a tree that grows fast, fills in well, resistant to insects and disease, and it's easy to maintain. You know, and yeah. uh, when I show this, it's like you get one or the other, but you don't get both. And right. so uh, the reality is when we're uh, dealing with clients, <laughs> we always have to say the client wants <clears throat> what the client wants, whether it's practical or not. And, uh, you know, to uh, to keep our customers uh, happy, we, uh, we need to take every effort to try and uh, um, satisfy what their expectations are. And sometimes that means putting in trees that grow very quickly, but once they come to size and density, uh, then we need to figure out a means of suppressing that growth while uh, while maintaining the 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 look that the uh, client wants and so that's really the the mindset behind uh, starting out with a, a, a plant growth regulator but really Perfect. it's it's kind of a uh, an integrated approach when uh, when you talk about managing the growth of trees um, there's water management nutrient management Obviously, uh, you can trim the trees, and then ultimately, yeah, I think you're going to find yourself having to look at tree growth regulators. Absolutely. So, uh, let's uh, let's look at the options. Uh, as I always tell people, when it comes to water management, water is truly the most abused input in uh, in the landscape today. Uh, mm -hmm. People just don't really know. The majority of people I see don't know how to efficiently and effectively manage uh, water. People tend to overwater uh, their, uh, their landscaping or grossly underwater it, and they just don't put the focus on it that they should. But the question I have when we're talking about different approaches to managing tree growth is can you suppress the plant growth through uh, limited water stress? Right. And the short answer is yeah, you really can, but it's a balancing act between uh, managing the growth of the tree and not overstressing the tree. And it can be done, it's a challenge to do. Uh, one of the problems that people always have is if you have a uh, irrigated landscape in close proximity, uh, that irrigated uh, area is probably going to give you enough uh, water to uh, keep that tree very happy. Or for example, if you have a uh, slope anywhere uh, where those trees are, and if those trees are at the base of a slope that's being irrigated, they're, uh, they're going to get all the water in the world they need. And frankly, you're going to have uh, limited ability uh, uh, to do this, uh, depending on precipitation. And then finally, if, uh, if you do a very good balancing act, those plants eventually will grow out of the water uh, or, or out of their uh, uh, smaller size, and they're going to be full-size trees. And uh, water management is only going to have limited effect on, uh, uh, on the growth. So... Then we can look at nutrient management. And when I talk about nutrients, I always say, what are you trying to accomplish with your uh, nutrients? I mean, are you looking for growth, color, flowering? And when I put growth here, is it in increased growth, decreased growth while maintaining uh, the visuals of the tree? Um, you know, it, uh, it, it's all those things that you really have to answer uh, the questions before you go on. Uh, once you do that, I always ask, do you have uh, an established baseline for your nutrient levels? And I always press on the professionalism of what we yeah. do. And one way, is, one way that we can really drive professionalism is not, by not going out and just doing a thumbnail evaluation of uh, what the dirt looks like or what the tree looks like and speculating on uh, what, uh, what's going on in terms of uh, soil chemistry and nutrient availability. This is where uh, I, I always encourage people to do soil sampling. And once you do the soil sampling, you then bring in a independent third party who lets people know exactly where you are with, uh, with your soil chemistry. And that allows you to best make the decision on, uh, on how to move forward. But that being said, uh, what's going to have the most uh, impact on tree growth? And that's nitrogen. And early on in the, uh, in the development of a tree and a grow-in, 
absolutely, you're going to keep your nitrogen levels higher because you're pushing that tree to grow in a uh, healthy and effective manner. Uh, the others that uh, have an impact is uh, the phosphorus, the potassium, and all the miners for that balanced growth. But once you do get that uh, tree established and grown in where you need it, you really can start to pull way back on any nitrogen uh, that goes on those trees. And in many cases, you really don't need to put any on because if there's uh, turf grass in close proximity, that turf grass is giving you all the, uh, if it's being uh, managed, is gonna get all the nitrogen uh, that that tree needs and then some. If you're in a uh, less manicured area, then the question becomes, are, uh, are the leaves allowed to stay uh, on site? Uh, are you able to develop uh, a duff layer uh, uh, on the surface? If so, you're probably doing enough nutrient recycling there that just absolutely minimal amounts of uh, nutrients ever need to be applied to the tree. Mm -hmm. And so um, then we can look at uh, tree trimming and uh, tree trimming can, tends to be costly. Anytime you bring a crew in to do uh, trimming, it always rep represents a hazard in terms of harm to the tree, harm to the surrounding area, uh, potential accidents. Uh, anytime you're doing trimming, it creates openings for uh, on the tree for uh, potential disease infections. Uh, yeah. There's the issue of waste disposal. Uh, I, I note challenges in high-end landscapes because if you're in a high-end landscape like uh, estate settings, uh, those people never like to see uh, uh, trimming crews right. come in. They never like <laughs> to see any crews come in. Plus, if you've got large trees and you've got to bring climbers in or if you've got to bring in a bucket truck, uh, chances are you're going to do some damage uh, somewhere else to the landscape. And the truth be told, if you're, uh, if you're looking at doing trimming on a regular basis, there's a fair amount of equipment that you need to purchase, you have to maintain, and just the equipment itself represents a hazard. So that really leads us down to what can be the most predictable, uh, manageable uh, rep, rep, uh, treatments that can be replicated. That really comes down to tree growth regulators. And Truth be told, there are very few options today. And in today's market, there's really only two. The first option, which I'm always hesitant to even bring up, is uh, a repar product called Maintain CF-125. I always bring this up just to let people know that it's out there. But in no uncertain terms, I can't say strongly enough how I discourage people to use this material. When, uh, when the sun, the moon, and the stars align themselves very well, this is a very, it can be a very effective and very cost-effective uh, product. The problem is this has the uh, high potential to uh, damage, if not kill trees. Uh, it has a high potential to cause uh, a tremendous uh, distortion on, uh, on trees. And it has a very poorly written label that is very challenging to interpret, which means if you do have a problem, you're probably gonna be on your own. So in no uncertain terms, I tell people to stay away from maintain, which brings us to paclobutrazole or short stop. And uh, short stop is much more forgiving than the, uh, the maintain. It really is relatively simple to apply, uh, cost effective, and when I say cost effective, that's not just comparing it to say maintain, because uh, you will find that per uh, treated inch DBH, shortstop will be more expensive than maintain, but uh, your overall uh, final results from shortstop will be much, much better. But again, uh, the cost to apply this, when we talk about cost effectiveness, we talk about the reduced uh, need to go in and do trimming uh, the reduced uh, bio waste uh, removal, uh, the reduced uh, potential for uh, damage and injury when you do send a, uh, a pruning crew in. So you start uh, adding all those things up, it does become very cost effective. It's persistent uh, in its uh, activity in that really depending on whereabouts you are and the timing of your application, 
it's going to persist in uh, growth regulation anywhere from two to three years, has a really low environmental impact in that you're uh, putting out a very small amount of product and you're doing it in a very concentrated way. And, uh, um, and, and it just, uh, it really is a very good way to go. Uh, I put unforgiving there. Uh, actually, shortstop is a much more forgiving uh, uh, product than uh, any others. And so from the p standpoint of uh, being able to uh, have things no, go not quite right, uh, shortstop is always going to be more uh, forgiving. But these are uh, hormones that you're applying to the trees. And so uh, you do have to uh, follow the label and you do have to do the uh, dosing correctly or they can be unforgiving. So how does shortstop work? Basically, pac paclobutrazole works because it blocks the three steps and the terpenoid pathway for the production of the hormone gibberellin by binding with and inhibiting the enzymes that catalyze the meta metabolic reaction. Does that sound familiar to you, Ron? Absolutely, Will. Well, yes, sir. Here, if, if, uh, if you didn't understand what I said, let me make it a little clearer. <laughs> <laughs> there, how's that look? <laughs> but actually, when you look at this uh, terpenoid pathway, it's kind of uh, interesting because uh, you see down here in the lower right uh, where uh, we've got the production of uh, gibberellins in the plant. Yes. So what, uh, what the shortstop is doing is in several of these pathways, it's actually blocking uh, that pathway so you don't have the gibberellins being applied or uh, being produced. So that's really what it's doing. One of the other thing that is really of, uh, of great benefit, if you're putting a, uh, a block in this pathway right here, if you look over to the right, one of the, uh, one of the products that is then going to have more energy and more opportunity to produce more of is abscisic acid. And the abscisic acid, and we'll talk about in a few minutes, has uh, some really upside potential if you increase uh, the levels in the leaf of, uh, of the abscisic acid. So what does all that mean? It means that shortstop reduces the production of gibber gibberellic acid in the plants. And why is that important or just what it, is it that jib does in a plant? Well, quite simply, gibberellins promote cell elongation. And from a tree standpoint, what that means is really your inner nodal length on a branch. But one thing a lot of people don't realize is how commonplace gibberellic acid is used in the production of table grapes. And uh, just to give you an idea, same plant, same vineyard, uh, everything the same, just being one area treated with gibberellin, the other not. And uh, you can see what happens uh, in terms of uh, development. Now, this is a little different. Uh, it's, it's almost opposite, but uh, what we're trying to accomplish, we're blocking gibberellins with uh, paclobutrazole. But if you're a grape grower, you're periodically treating your, uh, your grapes with gibberellin because every time you treat with gibberellins, you uh, um, enhance the growth and the elongation of every one of those little stems that each of those grape berries is on. And as they elongate, that gives them more room to grow and expand. And with more room, they can get bigger. And so you can see right there the impact that uh, gibberellins can have in enhancing growth. So our pr uh, thought process here and why we're using the shortstop is we want to block that development of gibberellins and, uh, and minimize uh, cell elongation. So what can I expect if I do a treatment with shortstop? Well, I'm going to definitely get growth reduction. I'm going to get improved leaf color. I'm gonna get enhanced fine root hair growth. I'm gonna find myself with a denser canopy. I'm gonna get improved tolerance to water stress of the plant. And there's gonna be a health, a plant health bump as I like to put it. Now, again, trees grow slowly. Now we all know that there's some trees that grow faster than others, but for the most part compared to 
annual color or even ground co cover, trees grow relatively so slow. So we can talk about all these things to expect from shortstop, but it all takes time. At an absolute minimum, you're not going to notice anything for at least 30 days. And in most cases, and especially depending on the time of the year, it's going to be much longer. And in some cases, some of these uh, attributes from shortstop may not fully express themselves for upwards of 18 months. And so the reality of it is you really need that time to allow the tree to grow into the full effects of the uh, shortstop. So in terms of growth reduction, uh, the reduction in cell elongation really expresses itself in uh, many ways, but realistically it hits on that internodal length. And uh, you know, every, uh, every tree that we uh, work with has internodes. And I've had uh, different trees, uh, camphor trees in particular, that I've done uh, a fair amount of work with shortstop on. And we can, uh, we can take that internodal length and reduce it by a good 40%. And uh, what that means is that's just 40% less growth that you have to consider uh, pruning or trimming at some point. And uh, it's just a reduction. And so if you're unfamiliar with using uh, shortstop, uh, one of the easiest ways to see the effectiveness of it is if you've got trees that you can compare that are and are not treated is go in and look at the internodal length. If you don't have treated and untreated uh, trees, well, one thing you can certainly do is approximately yeah, 12 months after a treatment, compare earlier years internodal length with the newest uh, growth. And you will typically find that that uh, newest internodal length is significantly smaller than uh, previous years that are on that tree. You're going to get improved leaf color. It's going to be uh, much darker. Uh, I use this again specifically on camphor trees because here in Southern California, uh, they like to grow yellow instead of green. And uh, we've all but driven rusty nails into camphor trees trying to uh, drive uh, color back into them. And it's been fairly unsuccessful. However, using uh, uh, shortstop, uh, it's been very effective at driving uh, color back into the uh, camphor trees. There's probably several things that are uh, going on that uh, complete this uh, um, change or effect that you see. One is you're uh, developing an increased uh, root mass of fine uh, roots, which is frankly improving the uptake of nutrients and giving you better water management. So overall, you have a healthier tree. But I think more importantly, you're starting to concentrate the chlorophyll in the leaves, the chlorophyll being the part that uh, expresses itself as green color. And so as you get the effects of the shortstop of reducing cell elongation, you don't change any of the content within each individual cell. You still have the same amount of chlorophyll just in a smaller area. So it's going to give you a denser, brighter looking green because you've got the same amount of, if you will, pigmentation just in a smaller area. And there are some uh, people that speculate there may actually be an increase of uh, chlorophyll production due to the uh, application of the paclobutrazole. But all these things combined, uh, we may not fully understand the science behind it, but the uh, outcome or the results is a very strong uh, increase in uh, better color of, uh, of the leaves. Denser canopy, and uh, in a lot of the areas that I work through Los Angeles and uh, state work, <laughs> in, in high-end uh, areas. A lot of people uh, are putting a lot of plant material out as privacy uh, hedges and uh, in increased privacy for their property. Well, one of the uh, hallmarks of uh, that type of situation is density, density of the canopy. And so uh, if you're shortening those inner nodes on a tree, it's certainly going to increase the density of that canopy. On the good side, it's certainly going to improve the aesthetics. Uh, you kind of look at the two trees here. Uh, when people think of trees uh, and the canopy, the one on the right is many times more what people uh, 
expectations are as opposed to the one on the left. It has a much more open uh, canopy. The one caveat that I will say here, if you're dealing with plant material that has uh, issues with uh, fungal diseases and uh, very specifically powdery mildew with a denser canopy, you do have that potential for reduced airflow. And so not to discourage you from utilizing the shortstop, but again, it's something to be aware of. And as you're doing your inspections uh, in your different properties, something to keep in the back of your mind. Um, also, with an application of uh, shortstop, you're going to improve your water stress management on any of your plant material. And this really comes from uh, the uh, increase and improvement of fine root hairs uh, that come from uh, the application. More root hairs, uh, more roots overall, allows that plant to uh, go out and find that moisture more effectively and more efficiently. Uh, one of the other things, though, that we had talked about earlier, paclobutrazole also interferes with uh, the development and the breakdown of the abscisic acid. So what does that really mean? Well, one of the functions of abscisic acid in the plant is it uh, helps moderate uh, the opening and closing of the stomates on the leaf. And with the increase of abscisic acid in the leaves, it's going to uh, tend to keep those stomates uh, um, open less and uh, close more often. And uh, this whole action will uh, result in a reduction of uh, uh, water loss through uh, transpir transpiration. Uh, one caveat on, on all this, to maximize and really get the benefit out of uh, drought management uh, from shortstop, those applications need to be made prior to the onset of the water stress. Uh, plant health, and I got to put a great big asterisk there because no recommendations are made for the use of shortstop for the suppression or control of plant diseases. Uh, I'm not making any recommendation, nor does the label speak to any uh, um, fungicidal or bacterial side uh, um, properties. But there is considerable amount of anecdotal evidence out there that you can expect to see suppression of uh, several fungal diseases, uh, including uh, uh, mildew with the application of shortstop. Uh, many people talk about uh, a suppressive effect when it comes to leaf scorch after an application of short stop. But again, uh, this is not on the label and no rec recommendation can be made to utilize uh, short stop as a fungicide. And again, if you are to evaluate the potential for help with plant diseases using short stop, realize that treatments, again, need to be made prior to the onset of any infection uh, to be of any benefit. So how do I apply this great stuff? Well, realize that shortstop is primarily root absorbed. Uh, uh, it can really be done either via soil injection or a collar or what I, I will call a basal drench. And uh, in, in simplest terms, guys, there is, uh, there's the equipment and uh, there's the level of the uh, um, technology that you need to make a uh, application with shortstop. Now rates, rates applied for the material are both species and uh, DBH dependent. Uh, you can go to the uh, ArborJet website and there's a uh, uh, rate chart there that uh, goes by species and DBH that helps you calculate out exactly what, uh, what rates should be applied. If you go over that and you're still not sure, you can certainly reach out to your target sales rep or you can reach out to uh, someone at ArborJet and they will be more than happy to make sure that uh, your, uh, your rates are, are exactly where they need to be. And this is one of those things, guys, that I strongly encourage you. If there is absolutely any doubt in your mind before you go out and make that application, do the math, do the calculations, double check it, and then reach out to someone who has experience with it and have them also confirm that your applications are correct. Uh, it's always better to double check before you do the application than later on make that application and have to make the call that says, I think I may have made a mistake. So 
along those lines, the question comes up, can I overregulate a tree with an application of shortstop? Short answer is, boy, you bet you can. Uh, if you're familiar with liquid ambers, this is not what liquid ambers are supposed to look like. This picture was taken in September several years ago, and because of traffic and other situations, I couldn't get any closer. But literally, uh, those are clusters of, uh, of uh, leaves on the liquid amber, and this tree was so overregulated that I kind of called it a poodle tree and that at uh, the end of every branch, you just had this ball, mass of leaves. And uh, that's, uh, this is the total growth that they got. And this tree was grossly overregulated. Did it kill the tree? No. Did, uh, did the uh, individuals involved with this particular uh, tree even know that they had a problem? I'll be honest, no, they didn't. And I didn't point this out to them. And several years later, the tree is back and growing uh, fine and healthy the way it normally should. But uh, what should I do if I have accidentally overregulated a tree? Best thing you can do is uh, at first time that you acknowledge or realize that you uh, have done a uh, overregulation, go in there and excavate the, uh, the treatment area to remove any remaining uh, paclobutrazole out of the, uh, the root zone. Replace that with soil that's high in organic matter. That uh, does two things. You remove any remaining paclobutrazole and the organic matter in there can also absorb any uh, product that you weren't able to uh, pick up. And then the next thing you can do is try and stimulate that tree to be pushing new growth. And that's uh, primarily going to be done through nitrogen. I wouldn't go out there and drop bags upon bags of uh, fertilizer on a tree like this, but uh, some gentle nudging with a readily available, available nitrogen source would definitely be uh, advisable. Also, uh, just to improve the overall vigor of this tree, because this is definitely a stress on the tree, I would uh, strongly encourage you to uh, do an injection with uh, Phosphajet, just again, to uh, take any stress off that tree that you can and uh, help to push it to grow as efficiently as you can. And then trees typically will not die from an over application. Uh, don't ever try and uh, prove me wrong on that. I'm sure at some point you can reach that uh, tipping point where uh, you would kill the tree but typically they do not die from over application, but it may take more than 12 months of uh, that tree uh, growing to uh, outgrow such uh, severe over regulation. So my last thoughts on the tree growth regulators, um, they can be an effective and useful tool, but they're not a cure all for everything. If and when you start working with them, you need to be patient uh, for the uh, shortstop to fully express itself in the tree. Absolutely uh, take care and uh, make sure you're dosing correctly, uh, which means always read and follow all the label instructions. Uh, let's see, the other thing to keep in mind, if you're treating a, a tree and there's other plant material in close proximity or other plant material that has roots that are gonna uh, invade into that uh, treatment zone, there will be some regulation of that plant material. Uh, excluding turf grass, it should be only minor. Uh, in most cases with turf grass, uh, all you're gonna see is a reduction in the uh, shoots of the, uh, the grass. In extreme cases, if you had turf grass growing right up to the collar of the tree, which you shouldn't, but if you do, you may get some uh, turf die off, but in uh, worst case scenario, it will be very minor. And all I encourage people to do is do a cost analysis and you'll find that shortstop can be an effective way to maintain the look and growth of your trees very effectively. And just as a side note, newly labeled for shortstop, excluding California, shortstop is now labeled for use on shrubs. You can get the same performance that you expect from shortstop on your trees only now you can uh, take that and do the same exact thing on all your woody shrubs. And really even more importantly here, because the shrubs take uh, higher maintenance levels, 
you're going to find yourself with tremendous labor savings. Uh, and frankly, especially with the woody shrubs, you're going to find improved aesthetics because you're going to have a denser plant. Once you get those uh, uh, plants pruned up uh, and shaped in the manner that you want them and you treat them with shortstop, they're going to hold that look much longer, which does nothing but improve your reputation as a uh, landscape manager to be able to hold the uh, aesthetics that much longer. And so with that, uh, thank you. And